Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're joined now by one of our news partners, our friends, Irv and Jessica from Wild. Welcome back to the program, guys. Good hey, to see you both. Good Thanks to see you too. I always that. love seeing you on the show. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about adults with dyslexia, which I think mm -hmm. is a really interesting topic because it's not often as commonly or frequently talked about. But something that you guys say about Wild that I think is great is you serve everyone 7 to 70. Mm -hmm. So it's awesome. You guys are here to help. And let's start with kind of just giving some background information on it. So what is the prevalence of identified dyslexics in the U.S.? Um, prevalence is about 20%, but that only takes into account people who have actually been diagnosed. Wow. Doesn't take into account all mm -hmm. of those that go undiagnosed. And that must be, be probably a large amount, right? A lot of people will go into adulthood not realizing We perhaps. would assume. Mm -hmm. So where do, are we finding dyslexic adults in our community? Um, it really depends, I think, on age. Mm -hmm. um, a lot has happened with changes in special education, and um, some of them are getting diagnosed now, um, but older adults oftentimes really struggle to keep jobs and um, many of them sadly end up in the correctional facilities wow. or end up on social services just because they can't um, perform um, in the workplace. So what, yeah, what are some of the effects that this is having overall in the workplace? Well, you know, we, we can add homelessness to, to that list of where we can find those, but uh, you know, the way it affects, um, basically, these folks end up in uh, social services. Mm -hmm. uh, they also end up uh, going to Department of Vocational Rehabilitation mm -hmm. and uh, seeking services, although sometimes when they don't know they have a learning disability or dyslexia, uh, those counselors don't always pick up on it. Sure, they don't know how to best help them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm concerned when, when I hear the, the layoffs at Oscar Mayer. Say, right. for example, uh, people that have been working at Oscar Mayer for 22 years plus mm -hmm. will lose their jobs. And, and when we talk about that high prevalence of dyslexia, mm -hmm. some of those folks may have dyslexia and won't know it. So mm -hmm. unidentified. And I think they were pretty strong help with um, in, involved in that rehabilitation process from what mm -hmm. I understand as well. So we want to make sure that those folks are taken care of as they're coming yes. out. That can be a little nerve wracking. Mm -hmm. And I imagine some of these things that you guys are saying, I mean, they're pretty shocking to hear what massive effects dyslexia can have on someone's life and the path it takes. But I also imagine this can have a large effect on our economy as a whole. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the effect on the economy, well, let's just take for example, uh, those that are not identified, even those that are, are identified, mm -hmm. when they go to school, the secondary school, um, they will sometimes um, uh, not succeed. And they'll take out grants and loans and so forth. And then uh, it has been estimated that there's trillions of dollars of debt that these people wow. end up with that's, that's basically a, a burden on our economy. Um, just simply because they can't get jobs then to pay those loans back. Absolutely, because mm -hmm. typically the intention is you take out that loan believing that you're going to get that really exactly. high rate of return because you have this degree, but they don't ever get to that point because right. dyslexia it makes it, would make it so hard to complete a secondary yeah. education. Right, and the, I mean, the workforce, the demands, mm -hmm. um, they're just increasing. I mean, day, the definitely. technology skills, literacy skills, you need to um, be able to um, function in any job. It Certainly. Like our our bare skills. minimum is, has definitely increased, you yes. know, from 50 years ago. So that's Absolutely. a really good point. Well, what can we start doing about this? Well, I think identifying is one thing that we need to start mm -hmm. doing. Uh, there is assessments that can be done to identify those that have not been tested and uh, then uh, a label appropriately assigned. You know, when you take into account that there's 40% of our workforce are not able to uh, be hired just simply because of their literacy skills. 40%. 40%. And, yeah, and, and, when you th and that's just in Wisconsin. Wow. And then when you think about 35% of the learning disabled population in our schools drop out, you know, we're talking about a huge number of people. That are that, illiterate. Yep. Wow. And so it's a concern, should be a concern to us all. Yeah, mm -hmm. these are really staggering numbers and facts, and I just think to bring it to light is so good because, like you said, it has so many huge implications across our society as a whole. So right. 
it's really good. It's also really good that you guys think there are things we can start doing and, you know, to work with this and to help improving. Absolutely. So as, as far as wild, though, before we go quick, I want to know what is the percentage of children versus adults that you guys are working with over at wild? Um, I'd say probably about 40% of our clientele um, are adults. Um, and that kind of ranges between um, students who are looking at graduation from high mm -hmm. school um, up into, I mean, I think we have 65-year-old with us right now. Oh, so Wonderful. Quite a range. <laughs> We're so lucky that we have you to help with this problem. We really are. Thanks. Thank thanks, for, thanks for coming on and spreading the word about this. This has been a really interesting subject, adults with dyslexia. Once again, this has been Irv Carpenter and Jessica Edge from WILD, one of our news partners here at Talk of the Town. We'll be right back talking with Ladame Footwear. Stay tuned.